a very good evening to one and all. Myself, Pranjal Bhon, and I, along with my team, will be presenting the project Virtual Chemistry Lab. In the last two days, we all have seen amazing ideas, brilliant concepts, and various forms of learning aids, which came up because of the summer internship program. Our project is yet another feather in the cap. The Virtual Chemistry Project, the Virtual Chemistry Lab, is an Ekshaksha initiative under the MHRD project. It was initiated two years ago under the able guidance of Professor D.B. Fatak, Mr. Avinash Avte, and Mr. Mayank Paliwal. It is because of these people that the project has been successfully finished. Let us get a quick introduction to the team VCL. We have Ajay Anand, Amit Bhatti, Bhavya Duvedi, Ishti Gupta, Sanket Mehta, Shiladitya Mandal, Sri Vidya Venugopalan, and myself, Pranjal Bhun. The entire project may be broadly classified into two aspects. The first is the interactive learning objects in which we created simulations of chemistry chapters in action script. The second part of the project is the virtual chemistry lab in which we created a virtual chemi a chemistry lab and we brought it to the virtual environment. Focusing on the first part of the project, the main aim was to create interactive learning objects of certain difficult to crack chapters of chemistry and to present it to the students so that they can learn in an efficient and better way. In total, we have completed 69 of such interactive modules. Here we have a demonstration of two of them. See, here on the display, we have the drawback of Rutherford model of atom. When a student reads this chapter, this topic, in the test books, he finds it very difficult to correlate. It is pretty much difficult for him to understand. This is because it is practically not possible for him to visualize the movement of such microscopic, ultra-microscopic particles. And here we can clearly see the electron following a helical path and then falling into the nucleus. This was our aim. We have yet another demonstration to show the electronic configuration of atoms. The sliders of the atomic number can be easily varied, and thus the electrons in separate rings can be definitely seen. This way of approach is so much easier for the student to understand. The major aim of the entire project was to break the notion of mugging up chemistry and to make it fun for the student to learn. Now, with this, I would like to hand over to Ishti Gupta so that she could tell you more about the Virtual Chemistry Lab. Uh, a very good evening to one and all. Um, I am here to present to you the broader aspect of our project, the Virtual Chemistry Lab. Uh, before we begin, I would like to mention that our project is in continuation with the uh, work of two previous teams. The, this, these teams pre, uh, primarily were um, uh, Dhawal, Naveen, Piyush, Shreya, Shruti, Anirban, Aviral, Harsh, Kaushik, Maleshwari, Mayur, Pankaj and Vikram Varma. Uh, these teams basically provided us with a virtual chemistry lab in Java that would run on desktop. Akash, however, runs on Android. Now, our major aim was to port this uh, virtual chemistry lab to Android. Uh, also, the previous version of the uh, virtual chemistry lab had a number of operational issues and also the graphics needed a lot of improvement. So, our second main thing was that we had to enhance the whole uh, virtual chemistry lab. Um, for this purpose, for, to fulfill these objectives, uh, we chose libgdx. Uh, LibGDX is a library for game development. Uh, why we chose LibGDX was because LibGDX firstly is in Java and the previous virtual chemistry lab was also in Java. Uh, secondly, LibGDX uh, provides us uh, the facility that uh, we write the code once and we can use it on a number of platforms like Android, um, HTML, uh, iOS and also desktop by changing just one patch or file. Um, so that's why libgdx. Uh, the scope, moving to the scope of our project. Uh, no government school, as we all know, has a chemistry lab. Also, it is not possible that uh, we have a chemistry lab in every school because financially, uh, chemistry labs need a lot of um, investment. Uh, 
uh, thus what we thought was that we will provide them with a virtual chemistry lab that they can work on as close to the real lab as possible. Um, I'd like to show you the basic look and feel of our uh, lab. This is our lab, this is the home screen. Uh, we have three modes, uh, the perform mode, the setup mode and the play safe demos mode. Um, for the easy understanding of the student, uh, we have a help mode. In the help mode, the student can clearly understand what has to be done in each of the modes. To explain to you further, uh, I would like to call upon Bhavya. Uh, good evening yet again. I'm here to help you dig deeper into the three modules that we have in our project. I'll start with the setup experiment module. The setup experiment module basically helps uh, you to set up an experiment like it is in a chemistry lab. First you need to set up an experiment and then you move on to performing it. Similarly is here, you can see there's a table. Left hand side of the table is the store wherein you get all the reagents and the equipments. And the right hand side is actually the workbench which has to be set up. The chemical reagents that you see on the cupboard are actually read through a dynamic XML file and we, you can add a new reagent onto the cupboard. You'll have to input properties of the um, reagent like its name, the formula, its pH, etc. Now when you add a new chemical to the cupboard, it is actually written into an XML file of the chemicals using an XML writer. There, you have the new chemical successfully added. Now, when you need to add equipments to the uh, workbench, what you do is that you create a copy of the equipments in the store. You cannot use them as such. When you make a copy, you actually input the volume of the uh, equipment that you're using. Uh, like he's put on a beaker, now he's adding a flask with a capacity of 500 ml. And he puts it onto the cupboard. Uh, there is a dustbin. You can see there, the right, uh, right bottommost corner. The dustbin is basically to aid disposal of any equipment which has been added by mistake. And this is necessary because you cannot add a new equipment unless you have placed the previous one on the workbench. Uh, we'll now set up an uh, experiment. He's bought the chemical bottle and a beaker and he'll overlap the two to pour chemical into the beaker. Now he's adding the volume which is required there. We place it on the workbench. Now we add the next chemical. Copper sulphate. He just added it. Again he'll overlap, pour it, enter the volume and he'll add it to the workbench. So this is how you can set up an experiment. There can be multiple equipments you can add. Now we'll proceed on to the Yes, this setup is saved again in an XML file because there is a need of using the setup next time you perform an experiment. So now we move on to the next module, that is the perform experiment module. Now uh, the perform experiment module is basically to perform an experiment and the activities you can perform while performing an experiment, a standard user can use is moving an ex uh, equipment uh, onto the workbench and uh, pouring and uh, washing, heating. So this is just a demonstration. We have again the workbench. The equipments and the chemicals have been added by reading an XML file. Uh, this is the beaker and uh, the burette the, for the purpose of titrations. This is one new feature we've added into the project. Heating is done by overlapping an equipment with the burner. You can Specify the time of heating. There. Now there's one more functionality that we have. It is of the pH meter. The pH meter was basically again added for the purpose of titration experiments because you need to detect the um, pH of solutions while titrations. If you hover the pH meter over chemical, it displays the pH of that solution. This is washing an equipment. You overlap it with the wash basin and the equipment is washed. 
we move on to the next module now you can save the experiment you have performed again for the purpose of learning and evaluating yourself from the experiment this is pouring uh, action you overlap the two beakers and We're saving it into an XML file so that you can use it for the demonstration purpose. Now we move on to the final module of uh, the virtual chemistry lab, which is the play saved demos. Now this module was integrated to help the user uh, look into some demonstration files or the previously saved XMLs. Uh, the demonstration files are basically for uh, the purpose of uh, making the user learn the use of standard equipments because the uh, aim of virtual chemistry lab matlab it is restricted to high school level so we added demonstration files for the equipments and we added demonstration files for the uh, two basic types of uh, experiments that one can perform which are on solutions and titrations moving on i'd like to uh, tell you that before we began with the project we actually uh, looked for some uh, other simulators of uh, the chemistry lab and we found out two major simulators one was wort lab and other was chem collective i'll just quickly tell you what's the difference between these and the virtual chemistry lab the virtual chemistry lab wins hands down on its user interface it's very simple to use and it's very attractive both these do have a very nice user interface but it is very complex uh, the other one one limitation i should cite of the virtual chemistry lab is that we are still limited with the knowledge of chemicals though we have a chemical class and the knowledge can be extended but as of now it is very limited um moving on i just like to uh, state a few points why one should go for the virtual chemistry lab and not for any other simulator the first point being like i said the user interface is very inter uh, attractive and uh, the second uh, yeah for a better experience of the virtual uh, of the real chemistry lab uh, everything that we've made is generic nothing is specific to an experiment uh, the chemicals the equipments can be used for any uh, experiment so that is how it allows the user to play with the standard equipments and reagents that are there in a chemistry lab next is uh, virtual chemistry lab being a part of the ek shiksha project was aimed matlab it the aim of building the virtual chemistry lab was that uh imparting free knowledge to everybody and so each resource uh, of the virtual chemistry lab is absolutely free unlike the other simulators and lastly uh, fulfilling the major um, objective that we had is the cross, uh, cross platform uh, nature of virtual chemistry lab why you should go for it it works on desktop linux and windows as well as on android to continue with the presentation i'd like to call upon shiladitya Uh, so I'll be continuing with the enhanced features of this VCL. As you know, this project has been done for the last two years as well. Uh, the first uh, aim of uh, enhancing was uh, the graphics. So initially, we basically enhanced the equipment graphics, as you have seen in the demo. Uh, the next was so the first improvement that we concentrated on was basically improving the graphics of all the equipments and improving the actions on these equipments especially fill pour rotate or titrate as you've seen in the demo experiment and the next part was the user interfaces all the dialogues have been improved they have been made transparent as you've seen the color chooser initially we uh, the uh, color chooser used to be just three text boxes for the red green uh, blue values but right now we have sliders for implementing that which makes it more user interactive and uh, we'll go to the next slide uh, as for challenges faced when we got the project first we didn't know what development platform to choose the existing project was made on java swing but uh, what we needed was a cross platform version which especially uh, which can work on android platforms so when we came across libgdx uh, it was a, it's a recent library with very uh, basic documentation so the first challenge was to understand the source code and how to use them to build new uh, modules every feature that you see over here the dialog boxes the file choosers everything has been coded by us there is no inbuilt functions for them 
So that was the first challenge, how to build basic modules using libgdx. And next was uh, the existing structure of all the objects was uh, a more of a hard coded sort of structure where with uh, built uh, with uh, hard coded x and y values but we had to change them to accommodate the relative positions of objects since uh, we we uh, we had to concentrate for uh, different screen sizes be it mobile devices or uh, desktop devices so we had to make sure that all the uh, data object description had to be relative to uh, to the screen and all the XY values of the uh, XY positions of each of the equipments were generated dynamically based on these relative positions. And Sangeet, uh, back. The next challenge that we faced was uh, to uh, implement the various uh, actions on these equipments as, as you've seen it's a very high graphic experience. And the next uh, challenge that we faced was to link the various assets. Now, as I've told you, it's a cross-platform development. So we have around four or five project folders for each platform. One was the basic libgdx code folder, which contains all the source code of the uh, uh, algorithms. The one was for Android, one was for HTML, one was for iOS. So uh, linking the assets between these all these folders, uh, since the file management in all these uh, platforms are different, that was a huge task. Uh, next. As for limitations, right now, the major limitation in our project is the lack of chemical knowledge. We have a chemical class which encapsulates uh, all chemical properties, but it's a very basic model with only uh, color properties or pH or molarity and molecular weight. We do not have any accommodation to provide uh, complex experiments, uh, complex uh, uh, like uh, equations and all. Uh, next, as I told you, we have a very basic level of experiments like uh, solutions and titrations. As for future scope, we have, uh, the, uh, an evaluation module can be uh, implemented since we already have the play module. Uh, next is chemical knowledge can be increased since we have a base class for a chemical and more uh, knowledge can be put into the structure. And uh, since we already have improved the graphics, we can improve it more by showing features like effervescence or heating as well. Next. So looking back, uh, looking back at the past six weeks of a project, mm, looking back at the past six weeks of a project, uh, we were really fortunate to have worked on libgdx. As I told you, like it was a basic, very basic framework. It had a lot of sub, like it, it's really powerful, but it did not have any inbuilt modules. We had to build every, every nook and corner of all the screens that you see is our own work. Every dialogue, everything is our own work, and. Uh, Next, uh, we were like eight members in a team, so previously we haven't worked in such a big team and synchronizing and combine, integrating the work of all the people was a uh, major task. Now that uh, Fatak sir has joined us again, uh, I would like to show him a demonstration of uh, how we have set up the actual lab. So we have this uh, virtual chemistry lab, so in which we have three modes set up, perform and play. So in setup, we can actually set up the uh, environment like we do in the real lab. In perform mode, we uh, perform the experiment, which are uh, saved in the XML format. In play demos, we have predefined sets, or the student can create his own uh, demonstration. So the teacher might provide XML files in which the uh, experiment has to be exactly performed. And this uh, student can play it. In the setup mode, we, can, uh, we have a store rack, and we have uh, a shelf for the student. They can add new chemicals or they can use the previously defined ones. For adding the new chemicals, the student has to uh, click on the new chemical button and we have to enter the details of the new chemical. The new option that we uh, entered from the previous version was that we have entered a uh, user interactive choose color option with sliders. Last time we had to use the RGB values which was very cumbersome for the teacher or the student to remember. Also we have included features like pH, molarity, and molecular weight. The new chemical uh, added uh, is in XML format. The file is saved in XML format, which was not previously used. Uh, also, we can have uh, various kinds of beakers and flasks. The uh, volume is asked every time we click it, and a new chemical is added. For pouring, uh, this is a disposal. We have a dustbin option uh, for disposal of any kind of equipment. We can uh, dispose beakers and flasks. For pouring a new chemical or previously defined chemical into a beaker, we just have to overlap the chemical bottle over the empty beaker. They ask us for the option, how much do we want to fill? We enter the volume and we fill it. 
once the setup is uh, completely created we can save the xml file and uh, they can be reviewed later e uh, either by the teacher for centralized evaluation for the future reference or by the student himself the perform mode is basically uh, to perform an experiment of the setup that is previously created suppose we have a previously created uh, xml file we open it and then we perform the experiment over it we can use the burets uh, for filling we have the uh, options to uh, empty the beakers and chemicals in the wash basin we also have burners so activities like titration can be easily performed because uh, such laboratories are not available in the government school very readily and government does not have finances to aid such labs so we are providing students with uh, the virtual chemistry lab on their fingertips the intensity of the heating can uh, again be changed by the user himself we have to uh, click it uh, to change the intensity of heating likewise we can heat it down also the ph meter is a new feature that we added from the previous uh, chem uh, chemistry lab uh, we have to hover the ph meter over the chemical and it would read the ph meter uh, ph value of the chemical also the student would not know how many uh, how, how does he have to operate the lab so we have provided him with a, a help button on the main screen itself so they can know how to use every kind of mode see in the titration uh, how do you define the normality or the molarity of the solution i haven't seen that part so just uh, we are just enhancing the titration feature because i have again. seen only the solution in the burette and the solution but yeah. i haven't seen the normality yes the we molarity. are just enhancing the titration again. there's a basic thing what you need to yeah we are enhancing that feature titration and solution two new features okay and how to change the ph because i have seen that part also the ph uh, ph we have to just over the okay so you just okay so you bring the ph there just a meter and you get the ph on and the ph over there was just uh, because we added the solution like that it was just displaying the ph there is nothing else it was just displaying the ph but when acid is added to base you will change the ph yes the ph will change that time during titration so that is yeah so you will have the calculations ready only we have to just bring the ph meter and check the new ph yes so coming back to ph meter if i carry out the titration the ph value will change would the ph meter be able to tell me the changed value or changing value as titration happens yes sir it will uh, but there is this small thing that in the uh, chemicals file we have to actually uh, we do not have one feature that is mixtures that has to be still implemented uh, once we have the mixtures feature when two chemicals are added uh, the value of the ph of the mixture will be stored in the xml so when we take the ph meter over there it will read that value no the problem is that the xml will result only at the end of the experiment so while i am doing the experiment the ph value is changing continuously as the titration happens uh, so, you, so after each activity we are uh, appending the uh, activity to the xml file no so. but the activity of titration will happen over a duration over a duration in fact it will be worthwhile to demonstrate that duration also by for example drops falling in so when the color changes the human eye detects it but even before the color changes or after color changes uh, it will be interesting to provide the ph value explain so one what sort yeah. of is uh, while titration the ph changes very dynamically so we can have a set of values for which we can show the ph after certain set, uh, set of steps the ph can be shown because it cannot be like we cannot vary it very dynamically but we can have a set of ph values no can you show. can verify it through calculations independently depending upon the volume of each component and the volume of each drop that is getting added you should be able to calculate ph and represent it will require some more coding what i'm suggesting is in your future scope of work please add a few explicit lines about this because this is important secondly the font that you have used and the color that you have used under the ph meter or the ph meter and that blob is very visible but the value is not very visible so values should not have fancy colors but should have readability 
for for the people i think that is very important will correct that sir uh, i had one more question which i have forgotten if i remember i will ask you later uh ha huh. the when you pour liquid you have to specify the volume what happens if instead of 150 i specify 1500 Oh, it does that. You don't pour 1500, and actually, it will be interesting to show the entire lab setup getting spoiled because some idiot is pouring more. So, but that, that's what will happen in reality, right? Second thing is, in the same window, you can have the PK value. I don't know how many. Uh, I think still 12th standard students do calculate PK. So when the pH goes, PK go, comes down. So thus, parallelly, you can have the two graphs in the same window. Okay, so Thank that you, way you can see that at any given point of time, what is the pH of your mixture and what is the pK of your mixture? Okay. Thank you.